flipping. <laughs> Here's the scoop. I mean, honestly, I could do a three-hour presentation on the flipped classroom. I've been flipping my classes since 2012. That's almost five years now. Awesome. And I love it. During that time, I didn't flip once, and uh, it was really difficult. I wasn't a fan. I mean, I still love teaching, and lecturing is fun, um, but being aware of all the things that I couldn't do with my students because they hadn't come to class with the lecture content already in their systems, um, it, was, it was hard. So if you have questions about why I do it this way or if you want more information, um, just give me a holla holla and I will hook you up with more info. But um, the fact is that no matter what kind of situation you're in, if you're learning something new, there's always two stages to learning. And one of them is acquiring content. Like somehow you have to get the new content. You can get the new content by reading. You can watch a video. You can um, participate in a lecture. And really, lecture is the most common by far way that the, the traditional lecture is the most common way for people to um, get content. Okay, I do traditional lectures. Like what you're going to experience in this class is a total traditional lecture. It's just um, moved to a different stage of the process. In big science classes, we mostly lecture because the content is so dense, and you probably have experienced and, and know that you know, reading textbooks is sometimes really challenging. There's so much new information, and how do you know what to focus on? And having an instructor, like, walk you through this stuff, it's magic. And usually they have good stories, and it's entertaining, and it's a valuable way to acquire new content. If you just acquire new content, you will have learned nothing unless at some point you do something with that content. So most instructors in a traditional setting, they lecture during class time, and then they send the students home to do homework. And the students are expected to study or rewrite their notes or answer questions or take a quiz. They're expected to do something at home on their own. And you have to do both parts if you want to be a successful learner. In a flipped classroom, it literally, you do exactly the same thing. You just do it in an opposite order from what you would expect. So um, the content acquisition stage does not happen during class time. That happens at home. If you've ever been asked to read a textbook before coming to class, you flipped a class. Like that instructor is flipping if they've asked you to come to class prepared. It's not new. It's not revolutionary. The fact that I am maintaining a lecture through a video, that's a little uh, crazy. And most students find it actually is, is super helpful. So what you do is you will acquire content on your own. You'll watch the video lecture. You'll take notes. You'll pause it if you want, go back, listen to it again, use your textbook to look things up that don't make sense. Like you're going to go through the process of getting the content, but it's going to be online before class. And then when you come to class, we're going to do stuff during class time, and you're going to have access to me while you're doing it. This is magic. This really is the powerful part of a flipped environment because I can address whatever concerns you have. Sometimes the concern is you need a freaking pep, pep talk. I'm really good at those, and I, like, I can rock the pep talk. We can have a two-minute pep talk, and then everybody's like, okay, deep breath. Now we can handle this content. We can get, we can get over that hump. I get you over it, and then we can tackle that, um, the tricky parts, which it's physio, you guys. There's going to be lots of tricky parts. The more we can look at things and the more we're engaged, the better off we are. Why am I doing this? Well, obviously, doing stuff in class is uh, extremely valuable. 
But there's also a, a level of engagement that I get to participate in that doesn't happen in a, in a traditional lecture. Now, this is one human, and so there are people out there who totally engage differently in um, class. But this is brain activity for a student who is um, in class and watching TV. This person, like, hung out for seven days with equipment that measured brain activity. And if you, uh, for me, this is concerning. Like, I look at this and I'm like, dude, I get paid a decent salary. It's pretty lame of me to have your brains this active when I'm giving you content. The video lecture, I'd love to have brain um, data from students watching the video lectures because I would argue that if your brain is in that state during the video lecture, um, the same state that it's in when you watch TV, I would argue that you're probably not doing very well, and most of my students are not in that state. Most of my students are taking really good notes. They pause the lecture. They go back and listen to it again. They look at the drawing. They draw the drawing first, and then they go back and start. Like, they're, they're super, um, they're taking the video, and they're using it in the most effective way possible for their brains. And what a lovely, what a lovely thing. What a great thing to be able to do that. So this explains why uh, it's, it's worth our time. It does take a, some scheduling, some rethinking how you're going to prioritize your time. And most students do value it because they are in the game to actually learn the material. There are a few students who, um, the rare ones, who could sit in lecture and listen to the lecture and process at the same time. And so they can listen and do something at the same time during class. But most of us aren't in that boat. And um, for the students who can do that, maybe flipping is, takes a little bit more time for them, but um, the quality of what we do in class, they usually can participate in a way that's um, valuable. So anyway, this is why I do it. Um, I hope that it's kind of clear. I have more videos on YouTube on about how to do it. So if you want more information, um, that's good. Let's look at the materials that are required for the class because I know that's a question that people often have, and there are probably some textbook questions, so I will attempt to address those right now, and then we get to talk more about, like, the cool stuff.